Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 352, Defeating Fear, Part 2. In this session, we're going to look at and learn what changed Peter and the other apostles from being men full of fear behind closed doors to being men full of boldness. I want to spend a little time on what changed Peter and the others. And we read this verse before, but in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 19, there is all those apostles behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. 2019, John 2019. And it, and it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for what? Fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. Jesus Christ, with that fear that those guys were seized with, said, Peace. Have peace. Be at peace. But you know what? They were behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. They were fearful of the Jews. What we're going to see is what changed these men from being full of fear well, let's look at Acts chapter 2. Very next book, just a few pages. Acts chapter 2, and verse 4 says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It's talking about the twelve apostles, the same people that were behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, which is God, gave them utterance. They got born again. This is the record of the first time anyone ever got born again. Fifty days earlier, they're behind closed doors. Fear of the Jews. This day here, they get born again. And look at verse uh, 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, he lifted up his voice and he said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. Does he sound like he's afraid now? No, no he doesn't. He doesn't. Look at verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know him being delivered by the determination of counsel and the foreknowledge of God and ye have taken by wicked hands and have crucified and slain the same people that he was afraid of says you took them you crucified them you slain them wow doesn't sound like he's very fearful anymore does he nope. he's not fearful at all he says hey you guys did it. What changed him? It was the being born again, receiving Holy Spirit, information from Jesus and God by revelation, and Jesus telling them, hey, on this day you're going to be able to get born again. And you're going to see the go sign. And then you're going to believe and have trust in God. And so when it happened, he did it. He got born again. He got Holy Spirit. He changed his mind to believe what God said was true about him. He had the go sign. It's not the stop sign. It's the go sign. And he said, you guys have done this. You did it. If you go to a school where they teach you how to preach, they say you never use the word you. You always say we. Peter must have gone to the wrong school. <laughs> he went to the school where he said, you guys did it. Pretty wild, huh? Look at Acts chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read this whole record just to see what happened to these men once they got born again. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. 
And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered in to the temple. And who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an arm. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. A miracle of healing. Peter said, Get up! And he got up. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, I know you guys all know this, but people who can't walk don't walk around leaping. <laughs> but he was leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat at four arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them un into the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered and he said unto the people, Ye men of Israel. Doesn't sound like he's fearful, does it? He walked with the power of God, saw this man, says, Silver and gold I have I, I none, but such as I have, I'll give you. And I can give you the gift of healing. And boom, he got healed. And now everyone's going, wow, this is pretty cool. And they're all running in to see him. And then Peter says, uh, and when Peter started, he answered, he said, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or wholeness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, of Jacob, and the God of our fathers has glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, denied him in the presence of Pilate. Then he was determined to let him go. Pilate wanted to let him go, but you guys wanted to crucify him. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And you went ahead and you killed the Prince of Life, whom God, what, raised from the dead. Whereof we are all witnesses. We all know this. In his name, through faith, or believing in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith, or the believing, which is by him, hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And here he is, right here, by the way. And now, brethren, I want, okay, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Then the time of refreshment shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the time of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For tr Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God rise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. In other words, it wasn't a secret. Jesus Christ was talked about all through the Old Testament. They knew that he was coming. They knew what he would do. Moses said, it's going to be a prophet like unto me coming. 
every from Moses, Samuel, they all told about Jesus Christ. And Peter's saying, hey, this isn't a secret. You guys go to the temple every week. You didn't know about this? That's what he's saying. All right, verse 25. Is that where I am? And uh, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abram, in, And in thy seed shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, and being grieved that they taught the people, and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead they didn't like at, they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was evening time. These guys came down. Here's Peter teaching God's word, telling you guys should have seen this. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. God raised him. And that's why this guy's whole, they took him and put him in, bound him. And, because it was evening time. Put him in a hold. Verse 4, How be it, many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men were about 5,000 men. This little miracle that Peter did on the way to the temple got about 5,000 people born again. Pretty good little day, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and the scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander, as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, By what power or by what name have ye done this? Well, they asked the question, right? They asked, well, how did you do this? Then Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, said, Well, you know, I'm a little awkward. You know, and John pushed me, and I fell, and I, and I grabbed the guy by the hand, and it was a mis No. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> Peter, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined by the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified man he's teaching wrong again he should have said we but he's pointing he which you crucified whom God raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you whole this is the stone which was set a knot of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the, they saw what? The boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. You know what that means? That means they didn't go to the right schools. They didn't go to uh, the right place, the right schools with the documents on the walls and stuff. It means these guys shouldn't be doing all this talking. Who are they? They don't have the right pedigrees. They don't have the right marks. But they says it says they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Oh yeah, they they been with Jesus. That's why they know. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. It's not because they didn't want to. But there's the guy standing there. But when they had, had commanded them to go aside out of their council, they confirmed among themselves. They said, get the apostles out of here. Get Peter and John, that, that guy that's no longer limping out of here. And they said, what are we going to do? They confirmed amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, a notable miracle has been done by them, is manifested to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. We'd like to. If we could get a hold of the press, we'd pull out how it was. But the they couldn't. Too many people knew. They could not deny it. But that it spread no further amongst the people let us strictly threaten them 
that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and they commanded them not to speak at all. Don't speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, you judge. You figure it out. Who should we listen to? You guys or God? What do you think? You judge. You figure it out. And what's he say? For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, I can see them now. Didn't we tell you not to do it? To threaten them again. Don't you ever do that again. We mean it. Further threatened them, right? They let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old. He was older than 40 years old, on whom this miracle of healing was shown. And being let go, they went into their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. See what happens. They get back to their own group, their own fellowship, and they say, Hey, you should see what happened. Me and Peter went into the temple. This guy asked to be healed. We healed him. Whew, they brought us down in there and they threatened us. They shook us. They said, don't you ever speak in that name. They have given a full report of what happened in verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, and this is the prayer they prayed, Lord, thou art God, which hath made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David had raged. Why did the heathen rage, and the people imagine vain things? And the kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and with the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, behold, Lord, their threatenings. God, you see, they're threatening us. And grant unto thy servants that we may have a vacation because we were working so hard for the... No, it doesn't say that, does it? And to grant that with all boldness we may speak thy word. Now, you would think they would ask for a break. I mean, here they are, out working hard for the Lord, getting shook up a little bit, thrown in prison, let go. You would think they'd say, give us a, give us some, a break. But that's not at all what they asked for. They asked for the thing that got them in the trouble in the first place. Boldness. Boldness got them in trouble in the first place, and they said, God, give us some more of that boldness. We want a little more boldness. That with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal. That was fun healing. We want to do some more healing. That signs and wonders may be done. All right. May be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place were shaken together where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know what they did? They spake the word of God with boldness. Bang! Just like that. What changed Peter for being a man full of fear behind closed doors? He got born again. He got Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with that Holy Spirit. And they spoke that wonderful word of God with boldness. The new birth, which is the power of the Holy Spirit... Nothing but the power of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of what you have in you, in the living Christ within you, takes the fear out of your life. That's what takes the fear out. You know, there was a time when I was full of fear in my life that I would never teach like I am right now. wouldn't even think of doing that. I just didn't know the Word. Didn't, I was full of fear. I was, wasn't well educated. Didn't go to the best colleges didn't take public speaking, 
couldn't sit in front of people and talk to them. But you know what? I know the Word. I've been reading the Word now for 27 years. I've been into the Word. I know it's true. I know it can help people. And that's what takes the fear out. The fear comes out when you replace it with confidence and trust in God. When you have something wonderful to give people, and that's that's wonderful word of God, then the fear is gone. Fear always defeats the promises of God. We want to proclaim the promises of God. We now believe God's word. We have confidence in God and trust in His care for us. We defeat fear by being bold in what God's word says we have. We have boldness to speak and to help others. And as we learn God's word, we definitely can help others with it. We are full of boldness. We are full of believing. We are full of power. We are full of positives. That's us. Till you made me whole like a diamond In a lump of coal I was dark Till you made me shine when you rescued me in the nick of time You took this vessel made of clay and you changed me from the inside Oh God, you are my life, you're my shining path in the dead of night when I I will drink good things from your loving cup Oh God, you are my God Oh God, you are my God For you, Lord, I would gladly serve And for you, Lord, I would boldly speak to the hungry you give words of life to the broken You give rest and peace You've given us the good news of your Son He has risen Oh God, you are my life You're my shining path in the dead of night When I lean on you, you will lift me up I will drink good things from your loving cup Oh God, you are my Oh God, you are my God Oh God, you are my God Oh God, you are my God Even though you know my frame You chose to love me anyway When I fall or when I fail Your grace prevails Your strength prevails I do not that that I would not I do it again that that I would do I do not that that I would not I do it again oh who will rescue me from this wretched man who will set me free will I thank my God it's been done in Christ I have been redeemed he has paid the price oh God you are my life you might Shining path in the dead of night When I lean on you, you will lift me up I will drink good things from your loving cup Oh God, you are my God 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 This concludes part two of the class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power, how to believe in God, and how to defeat fear. Next, part three will be on the beginnings, the first three chapters of Genesis. In the first three chapters of Genesis, there is so much foundational information that we need to know to understand the Bible as we read it. 
We will learn about the creation of heaven and the earth. We will learn about body, soul, and spirit. We will learn about the great war in the heavens, and we will learn what really happened at the fall of man, the loss of Holy Spirit, and the need now to regain what was lost at the fall of mankind. All this is made known to us in the first three chapters of Genesis. That's what we're going to get into next.